Hello and welcome to another trip report. This time again on an ICE, but an older generation. I think it's a first or second generation, I don't know exactly, but it's an older generation that runs between Berlin, um, starts in Berlin, Ostbahnhof, so the East Railway Station, then continues to Hauptbahnhof, so Central of Main, and then it calls here at Spandau. This is the only station of these stations I haven't featured in my videos yet, and since Berlin is quite an important railway junction, at least for me if you're living in the Netherlands. I'll feature the other stations in another video in the future as well again. So this is where I traveled a little bit to here. Um, I won't take it all the way to Dusseldorf or Cologne. I will take it to Hanover from where on I will take an intercity to Leer. Oh, it's close to the border with the Netherlands. Um, anyway, in this video I will show you this railway station. It's not very big though. Um, I show you the train. I hope it's not too busy so I can walk around to film a little bit easy over there. And I will show you some views from the train between here and Hanover. I hope you like this video. If you do so, give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more train related videos, subscribe to my channel. For now, let's roll the intro. I arrived in Berlin with a sleeper train that came from Budapest in Hungary. And when I was at the platform, the same platform as where these trains do depart from at Berlin Hauptbahnhof, some main station, I saw that there are different kinds of rolling stock for this route. But I did have the old rolling stock. As far as my knowledge goes, the older rolling stock will slowly be phased out and will be replaced by the newer type ICE4 trains. I do have two videos on those trains as well, you can find them in the description of this video. Like I mentioned in the introduction, I moved to Berlin Spandau because this is also a quite important railway station. Most trains that do go eastwards from Berlin do call here as well. But before I show you the railway station and the trains, I have a little message for you. If you're interested in other trip reports I did, below the description of this video on YouTube there's a link to a map and on this map you find all trip reports I did. The lines do indicate the routes and the train and ferry icons do indicate the station and ferry terminal reviews. This channel is mainly focusing on long distance and international train travel. Of course new lines will be added since I'm making new videos. But if you don't want to miss anything, just make sure you hit the subscribe button. And when you really don't want to miss anything, just hit the bell button so you get notified if I upload new videos. For now, let's continue with this video. At the front of Berlin's Pando railway station, there's a bus stop, some spots where you can park bikes, and there's the entrance to the metro. But we're focusing on the trains today, so let's go into the railway station. This railway station is being served by long distance trains, both intercity and intercity express trains, local trains and the S-Bahn, what is a commuter rail of Berlin. Near the entrances of this railway station in the tunnel there are some information points, some maps, timetables etc. And in the middle of the hall there's the DB Reisecentrum, what's basically a booking office. Close to this there are some more departure screens and a vending machine. I found the number of vending machines for train tickets relatively low within this railway station. And it's not very big either. I expected this a little bit bigger though. But it has all the necessary facilities you may need to buy some stuff for your journey. But most long distance trains also do have a dining car. At the back there are some more spots where you can park bikes. And it seems like close to the railway station there are some shops as well. Until 1920, Spandau was not a part of Berlin, so it still has its own identity. Although it's a long time ago since I've been here though, and at the moment I recorded this, I only had very limited time since I needed to catch my train. The tunnel that will link all the railway tracks with each other does have some shops like I mentioned before, and there are of course stairs to the platforms but also elevators and escalators. Directions are given ok, I mean this is not a very big railway station though, but digital passenger service information, I think they can improve this a little bit more. Although passenger service information is not bad, it is there, but I just think it can be a little bit better over here, that's all. Time to move to the platform. At the platform you find these waiting rooms inside, but of course there are also just some seats at the platform where you can wait for your train. And there's also a small kiosk. Special composition screens will host information about the train composition, but this will also be displayed at these digital departure screens as you can see over here. 
the letters will refer to letters you find at the platform so you know what carrots will be where at the platform. On this route the ICE is a combined train. It will run as one train to Ham in North Rhine Westphalia and from there on one section will continue to the final destination Cologne and the other section to the final destination Dusseldorf. On the outside you can recognize where the first and the second class is on the numbers 1 and 2. There's a digital display that will host route information and carriage number at the side of the train. And some icons to indicate some facilities as well. My personal experience with these ICE trains is that it can be quite busy. So newer trains that do have a higher capacity on this route. I think it's a very good thing to be on. Like I mentioned this train will split up at the railway station of Ham. There were actually quite a lot of people that managed to enter the wrong train part. What surprised me for this is the announcements for this were only being made in German. Of course it's a domestic train, but it's still a long distance train. For now let's take a closer look for these trains. It was actually quite busy as you can see here, and I didn't have a window seat, so I will do my very best to show you this as good as possible. The second class comes in a 2x2 two two configuration as you can see over here. In the middle of the compartment there are some luggage racks and of course you find the overhead luggage racks where you can place items as well. Seat numbers will be displayed both at the luggage rack where you also find a digital indicator that says from where to where a seat has been reserved and at the side of all seats. Most seats do come in an airline style or a long distance bus composition but you also find some seats that do face each other and then there's a bigger table between the seats. For the airline style seats there's a small footrest, a magazine rack and a fold out table in the seat in front of you. All windows do have a sunscreen. There's a special toddler compartment within these trains as well. It's on the left over here. I couldn't film it that well. Route information will be displayed at screens at the ceiling of these trains and will also be displayed at screens between the compartments. This is not only route information, but also the carriage number for example. Between the compartments you'll find these garbage cans you can use to recycle. And there's even a locker over here. There are several toilets and this is how the regular toilets look like. During my trip the toilets were clean and everything worked. I think this is most important. Between the second and the first class you'll find the dining car. There's a section where you can just pick up orders and this is close to the second class car. And at the side of the first class you will find this part. This is more like a restaurant over here. The first class of these trains comes in a 1x2 configuration. So one seat on one side of the aisle and two seats on the other side of the aisle. Just like in second class most seats do come in an airline style composition. And you find some seats facing each other with a table in between. If you buy a ticket, it does not always include automatically a seat reservation. However, if you have a promotional fare of DB, so the State owned Railway Company of Germany, you're obligated to take that specific train that's written on your ticket. If you're traveling on a busy day or if you're making a longer journey, I would definitely advise you to make a seat reservation. During my trip on a relatively short section of the route, some people had to sit between the carriages as well because there were not enough places in the second class. Free Wi-Fi is available. It's not just Wi-Fi but this is also an entertainment system you can link your device to. Apart from the entertainment system route information will be displayed over here as well. If you want to enter the onboard route information and entertainment system you should not use a VPN because then it doesn't work. If you want to use only the internet, you can just use a VPN of course. For now I'll show you some views from the train between Berlin Spandau and Hanover Hauptbahnhof. If you want to find out more about other stations where this train does call and the other types of ICE rolling stock you can expect in Germany, there will be a link to those videos in the description of this video.
that's it for this video. I found out I haven't done a proper end of the video at the railway station, so this is why I'm doing it right now, here at home. I hope you like this video. Personally, I think the comfort level of these refurbished ICE2 trains where I just did a trip report on is quite good. I really like it. Passenger service information is given fairly well. I think I like them a little bit more, at least for the comfort level, than the ICE4 and the refurbished ICE3 trains. Um, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Um, and I know these trains will slowly be phased out and will be replaced by the ICE4 trains. What is a good thing? Because the ICE4 trains are more energy efficient, they do have a higher capacity. So altogether, it's just a no-brainer they will replace this with the newer trains. Um, there are different types of ICE trains in Germany and also neighboring countries. The slowest ones can go 230 km per hour, the fastest ones 320 km per hour. The ICE2, the second generation where I did a trip report on, and the fourth generation both have a top speed of 250 km per hour. Although I do have to say that I, the fourth generation accelerates really fast, what's also, especially because distances in Germany can be relatively short, can really reduce the travel time a lot. Um, anyway, I will talk about that in another video while I will review those trains. I already have one video and there will be another one on the route from Bern to uh, Frankfurt. The train continues to Berlin as well. Um, I hope you like this video. If you do so, give me a thumbs up on YouTube. It will really help the channel grow. And if you like to see more train related videos, subscribe to my channel. Um, this channel is focusing on long distance and international train traveling. I want to convince people and well show people how it is to travel on a more sustainable way of transportation. Um, so this is why I started this channel. You can also support me on Patreon. You can already do this from one euro, dollar or pound per month. Um, you can go to patreon.com slash trainviking to find out more. Um, I don't earn anything on this channel, although I do get monetized by YouTube. I do get a little bit of money from Patreon. Um, it still costs me money. But what I do earn will be directly invested in the channel again for new gear, trips, etc. So I, don't, well, I wish I could earn a little bit of money on this so I could work less. Anyway, uh, once again, I hope you liked it. Um, for the very last part of this video, I will show you the environmental impact on this route if you're traveling by train, car, and plane, um, this will be for the entire route, but I will do it from Berlin Hauptbahnhof, so not from Berlin Ostbahnhof, where this train actually starts, to the final calls, Dusseldorf or Cologne, because this train splits up at the railway station of Ham. If you want to find out about the other railway stations where these trains do call and the other ICE trains, I, have this, uh, I will make links in the description of this video below. Um, well, for now, let's take a closer look at the environmental impact on this route. This graph shows the environmental impact. The left part is about the route Berlin-Dusseldorf and the right part about Berlin-Cologne. Of course, trains will not clean the air, but these are one of the most environmental friendly ways of transportation, apart from walking, taking a bike or swimming. Okay, that's really it for this video. <laughs> if you made it all the way to this point in the video you really and you haven't subscribed yet, you really might to consider to subscribe to my channel. Just so hit the subscribe button. Um, and if you don't like it, you can always unsubscribe. And well, once again, if you have any questions, if you just want to say hello, leave a comment. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And now I really stop talking. See you on my next video.